In today's video, we're looking at animal and plant cells. So we'll cover what cells are, the subcellular structures that cells contain, and finally, the differences between animal and plant cells. Let's start with what cells are. You can think of cells as the basic building blocks of life. And what we mean by this is that they're the smallest unit of life that can replicate independently. So if we took an animal or a plant cell, they could divide into two cells, then into four cells, and so on. And it's these cells that make up an organism. To see what I mean, imagine we took a human and looked at him closely under a microscope. We'd see that he's made up of cells. So the skin contains skin cells, the blood contains blood cells, and so on. In total, we contain hundreds of different types of cells, and it's thought that an adult contains over 40 trillion cells altogether. Next, we need to look at the actual structure of cells. So we'll start by comparing an animal cell and a plant cell side by side to highlight their similarities and differences. Now, to understand cell structure, we need to look at the different parts that make up the cell. And these are known as subcellular structures, or sometimes organelles. Firstly, both cells are surrounded by these cell membranes that control which substances can pass in and out of the cell. For example, they'll let some chemicals through the membrane, but not others. Both types also have a nucleus which contains the genetic material or DNA of the cell, and so it effectively controls the activities of the cell as well. They're also both filled with a gel-like substance called cytoplasm. This is where all the other subcellular structures sit in, and it's also where the chemical reactions take place. You can basically think of it like water filling a water balloon, but the consistency is closer to jelly. Next, they also have lots of mitochondria, whose job is to provide the cells with the energy that they need to function. But basically, they break down sugars, like glucose, in a process called aerobic respiration, which releases energy that the cell can use. And finally, both cell types also contain loads of ribosomes, which are the site of protein synthesis, which just means that it's where proteins are made. Now, all of these subcellular structures that we've just mentioned are common to both animal and plant cells. But importantly, plant cells also have a few extra structures. For one, they have a rigid cell wall around the entire cell that's made up of a material called cellulose. And because cellulose is really strong, the cell wall can provide support and structure to the cell, which is really important because if too much water enters the cell, then it would otherwise burst. Next, a lot of the cell is often taken up with this thing, called a permanent vacuole. You can think of this as a big sack that contains cell sap, which is basically a mixture of sugars, salts, and water that this cell can use when it needs to. And finally, they also have chloroplasts, which is where photosynthesis happens. Basically, photosynthesis is the process by which plants use energy from the sun to make sugars like glucose. And to help with this, chloroplasts contain a green substance called chlorophyll, which absorbs the light energy that's needed for photosynthesis. And it's this chlorophyll substance that makes plants' leaves green. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.